What do we talk about when we talk about superhero comics? What is the greater meaning of a medium that has aspired to be simultaneously both the highest form of art, as well as entertainment for the masses? What are superheroes but the ultimate form of wish fulfillment, a flailing hope to be greater than a disappointing world? But what if those fantasies pointed towards something transcendent within ourselves and our imagination that was just a moment away from becoming a wondrous reality? Writer Grant Morrison and artist Frank Quitely's 1996 four-issue Vertigo miniseries Flex Mentalo is a superhero comic that talks about superhero comics. All the hope, cynicism, purity, perversion, and imagination that has been brought to life through the medium across the decades blended into a single story trying to will the world into a brighter future. The comic, which was the first of many collaborations between Morrison and Quitely, is a dual-layer meta-narrative that tells the story of its titular hero on a quest to save the world, while his creator, burnt-out musician Wally Sage, experiences a suicidal drug overdose and reminisces about a life spent reading comics while near death. Together, Morrison uses them to tell a semi-autobiographical tale of coming to terms with a life spent with imaginary heroes, and whether it's a life that has any real meaning. But, in all honesty, there's very little to the actual adventure of Flex Mentalo, a brawny superhero who can affect reality by flexing his copious muscles. Scenes and ideas play out in fractured order as the drugged-out Wally waxes poetic about his childhood and the many ideas present throughout the decades of comic books. From the moment the comic opens, with the hero The Fact bringing this comic universe into existence with a big bang from a cartoon bomb, Flex Mentalo plunges headfirst into the notion of comic books and whether they mean something deeper. Comics within comics, creations that create characters. This is your brain on drugs. One of the first lines spoken aloud here, maybe for Wally, but in Flex Mentalo, this is your brain on comics. Flex himself first appeared in the pages of Doom Patrol number 35 in August of 1990 during Morrison's highly influential run on the series. There, we learned of the hero's origin as a scrawny young man who learned the secrets of muscle mystery after seeing an ad for a bodybuilding book. With the ability to alter reality, Flex helped the Doom Patrol. Of course, that story has absolutely nothing to do with this one, and Flex's origins as the Man of Muscle Mystery, complete with his hero Halo announcing him as Hero of the Beach, which outright parodied old Charles Atlas ads, really has nothing to do with it either. But Morrison's love of building layers of meta-commentary and references into his superhero lore is a crucial aspect of how Flex originally came to be, and eventually itself became the focus of this four-issue miniseries. The story begins with our titular hero investigating a series of hoax bombings meant to draw attention to the fragility of society, attempting to unravel a mystery and find the strange hero known as The Fact who seems to be behind it. But the answers to this ill-defined mystery may save the world. As Flex investigates, we meet Wally Sage, strung out in his dump of an apartment after breaking up with his girlfriend and laying eyes on the comics he drew as a kid, which included Flex. Mentallo knows he was once a creation of Wally's, but was brought to life by him years ago. However, the adventure he is now in is also happening within those old drawings rediscovered by the author. In his 2012 nonfiction novel, Super Gods, What Masked Vigilantes, Miraculous Mutants, and a Sun God from Smallville Can Teach Us About Being Human, Morrison stepped away from creating comics to analyze their history and meaning, as well as weave his own autobiography into his studies. Like Wally, Morrison discovered comics as a child, and the superheroes within helped him overcome his fear of the bomb during the Cold War. He also replaced his love for comics with music in his adolescent years, only to return to them as an adult. His musings throughout Super Gods can help us unpack the ideas and autobiographical details folded into Flex Mentallo. We love our superheroes because they refuse to give up on us. We can analyze them out of existence, kill them, ban them, mock them, and they still return patiently reminding us of who we are and what we wish to be. The worlds and timelines immediately begin to blur as Flex's journey takes place somewhere between Wally's imagination and his own superheroic world. It's never specified and it doesn't need to be. Morrison is in search of understanding comics and himself through the story instead of telling a cohesive, tightly structured narrative. That means it has all the metatextual highs and self-important lows that Grant Morrison is prone toward when allowed to unleash the ideas that propel much of his work. And Quitely's magnificent, detailed art rubber bands in the ways that it needs to in order to evoke Silver Age heroism, mind-bending paradoxes, grubby, worn-out sexuality, and a brighter, heroic future. 
While the mingling of these two stories begs the question, which is real and which is not, the truth is that they are both real to the degree that their events and themes are equally crucial to the narrative. Although Wally exists in a world where superheroes were only ever in comic books, and Flex lives in a world that contains many of them, they are both equally valid in the ever-twisting, constantly shifting realities that make up the world of Flex Mentallo and the mind of Wally Sage. Superhero science has taught me this. Entire universes fit comfortably inside our skulls. Not just one or two, but endless universes can be packed into that dark, wet and bony hollow without breaking it open from the inside. The space in our heads will stretch to accommodate them all. The real doorway to the fifth dimension was always right here, inside. That infinite interior space contains all the divine, the alien and the unworldly we'll ever need. Early on, Mentalo wonders, what happened to the good old days? The heroes and villains and team-ups and dream-ups. While Morrison's comic wants to recapture the heroism of the past, it doesn't want to return to the Silver Age. It wants to move forward to something greater. Each of the four issues here walks readers through the different ages of comics, as Sage recollects growing up and changing his views on heroes. The golden age of classic heroism accompanies Wally's bright young optimism of childhood and simple, silly adventures of the 40s and 50s seen in Flex's flashbacks, even as the present world grows darker. The silver age of weird interdimensional adventure is encapsulated in the villainous Mentalium Man, the microscopic adventures of Nano Man and Minimus, and a strange encounter with heroes hiding on the other side of the moon. The Bronze Age of cynicism and realism sees Wally's sexual awakening and an embrace of darker stories, heralded by Issue 3's cover parody of The Dark Knight Returns, and an extended journey through a superhero nightclub as Wally considers how he's screwed up his relationship with his girlfriend. Finally, Issue 4 hopes for a future that transcends the modern era, which Morrison found at the time to have comic books at their weakest. At the time of Flex Mentallo's publication, the comic book industry was collapsing after years of inflation from speculators and mainstream work that was largely focused on dark heroes in the shadow of Watchmen. Flex Mentallo is a wish to move beyond this. Wally lost his love of comics and along the way lost a deeper truth that he had learned when he was young. Now, teetering on the edge of death, Wally must choose between life-ending adolescent cynicism and a life-affirming, mature optimism. He isn't alone in trying to find any small bit of hope in a darker world. In the background of this psychedelic adventure is a broke-down society awaiting the end of days. People in the world of Flex Mentallo are searching for something greater, which we can see in the story of a junkie who dies taking the drug Crystal, momentarily becoming cosmically aware and seeing the truth of superheroes buried deep within reality. It's a moment of beauty followed by a dingy death, separated from the true potential that was briefly glimpsed. The buried potential of superheroes within this grimy, dulled reality is briefly exposed in multiple moments throughout this story. Early on, Flex runs into an old janitor who claims to have once been given powers. Say the magic word in a crossword puzzle and be transformed into a god. Remind you of anyone? There's roving bands of abandoned sidekicks estranged from a simpler, heroic purpose. The floating heroes on the other side of the moon. An older Superman hiding in plain sight. Most importantly, a strange giant bomber is glimpsed in the sky by multiple people throughout the story. What is this strange harbinger of something greater? And will it bring about the apocalypse so many fear or salvation? And then there's Flex, ever hopeful, staunch in his heroism, incorruptible despite the chaos around him, a rare beacon of light for reader and creator. Throughout these four issues, Flex has been in search of answers to a mystery. What is this mystery? It's never quite clear. It's simply that the world isn't quite right. By its end, the reason behind the world's incomplete nature is that superheroes were once real. But to survive and escape from a doom akin to crisis on infinite Earths, they turned themselves into fiction. The comics created in the decades since were humanity's illustration of something greater locked away within us, an expression of our greatest potential. Wally suddenly remembers that as a child, he discovered the reality of heroes within our world. He is only now just remembering the truth. They talk to you all the time when you're little. They live in, I don't know, it's like a factory where ideas are made. They escaped from the absolute, but the plan went wrong. Reality was flawed from the beginning. I mean, haven't you ever felt like there's something missing? They want to come back home. We can save the world if we can just, if I can just remember my magic word. What? No. The world doesn't have to be the way it is. We can be them.
Superhero stories woke me up to my own potential. They gave me the basis of a code of ethics I still live by. They helped me grasp and understand the geometry of higher dimensions and alerted me to the fact that everything is real, especially our fictions. I had no need for faith. My gods were real, made of paper and light, and they rolled up into my pocket like a superstring dimension. Flex Mentallo the comic believes there is true value to be found in comic books and the world of superheroes, which have continued past their simple origins and rocky evolutions. As ideas, superheroes can guide us to a better world, filled with better people. The ideas of superheroes can save us. This is done literally within these pages, as Flex, The Fact, The Hoaxer, and The Lieutenant, who all find their beginnings within the pages Wally drew as a child, confront the villain behind the entire story, The Moon Man, the villain behind it all, who spread the fact across time and threatens to enact a new modernist comic, The Death of Flex Mentallo, with a dose of realism. And who hides behind this lunar mask but Teenage Wally? The cynical, disillusioned adolescent self that cast aside brighter, lighter superhero days in favor of something darker and seemingly more adult. His dismissal of comics threatens to destroy the world and his adult self. But it doesn't make him mature. It's like the hoaxer says, only a bitter little adolescent boy could confuse realism with pessimism. Simultaneously, Wally re-embraces life and changes reality. He didn't overdose on drugs. He ate M&Ms. Superheroes like Flex save him by helping him reconnect with the world through love. Gamble a stamp. I can show you how to be a real man. As for Flex himself, he must believe that the man who created him can embody the heroism and hope that he instilled in his creation. All we can do is hope. This is Flex Mentallo signing off. I'll be right here if you need me. With the darker, more cynical adolescent aspects of Wally defeated by his creations, he is able to reconcile with a life spent in comic books. If superheroes were once real and the expression of our greatest potential, the fiction we create is an assertion of a greater, more perfect reality. Upon realizing this, Wally is able to unlock his true potential and become a conduit for superheroes to become real in our world once again by speaking his magic word. We are the hands and eyes and ears, the sensitive probing feelers through which the emergent intelligent universe comes to know its own form and purpose. We bring the thunderbolt of meaning and significance to unconscious matter, blank paper, the night sky. We are already divine magicians, already super gods. Why shouldn't we use all our brilliance to leap in as many single bounds as it takes to a world beyond ours? Threatened by overpopulation, mass species extinction, environmental degradation, hunger, and exploitation. Superman and his pals would figure a way out of any stupid cul-de-sac we could find ourselves in. And we made Superman after all. All it takes is that one magic word. It's not Shazam, it's Shaman. Someone who can access and influence the spiritual world. Entering a trance-like ritual and divining truth. Summoning something greater to touch the physical, mundane world. The story of Flex Mentallo has been the ritual. What has been summoned is transcendence hinted at by decades of comic books. Flex Mentallo believes in a future where true human potential and a brighter world only dreamed of in comics becomes a reality. Given the more than 20 years that have passed since the publication of Morrison's book, it's clear that such a possibility remains a fantasy. Morrison believes that this comic can blow open holes within the medium and bring about a new age. But a book is a book. What you take from it and make of it is for each reader to decide. Of course, a lawsuit from the Charles Atlas company that kept it from being reprinted for years might have gotten in the way of that. And yet, Flex Mentallo is still a deeply personal story of one man struggling with the many aspects that make up his past, present, and future. Unlocking that potential and creating something better is, in the end, up to each individual. After all, what are superheroes but the reflection of what we believe about ourselves? The good and the bad, the broken and the perfect, the human and the godlike. All of these things are present in the way comics and the heroes within have been brought to life over the decades. But perhaps, like Flex Mentallo would have us believe, a wonderful future is right ahead of us. Look up!